everyone, in this video we are going to have a very brief scientific review of water, so what water is. Hopefully at this point we all feel very comfortable of writing the chemical formula of water as H2O. We would then be able to look at that and say that it looks like there's three atoms total, two of which are hydrogen and one is oxygen, and when you put them all together in a two to one ratio you end up with water. Now, we use the word water to describe almost anything. Whenever you look at the formula H2O you would call it just water. But there are other words that we use to indicate the phase of water when we're trying to be very specific. And so I want you to make sure that you're very familiar with all of these. So the first one is when we're talking about H2O in the solid state. When we're talking about H2O in the solid state, we always call this ice, okay? Now we could talk about H2O in the liquid state. Most of the time people call this just water, but a lot of times you'll actually hear scientists refer to it as liquid water. So they're trying to be very, very clear and communicate with somebody else that they're talking about water in the liquid state, not this um, kind of global generic term. And then the last one obviously has to be H2O in the gaseous state. And then we have two different descriptive pieces of information that we use here. The first one is water vapor. This one's very, very common in the scientific community. Or we have the word steam, which is more common out outside of the scientific community. So if you're ever boiling water for pasta, you would know that you've seen steam coming out the top. You've probably called it steam, but not called it water vapor. So from here on out for the rest of the module, I want you to be very, very comfortable with the words ice, liquid water, water vapor, and steam. Okay, so be very comfortable with that. Now for the rest of the video, I just want to hit you with three important facts. So these are things I expect you to know from here on out. The first thing is that water and ice cover more than 70% of Earth's surface, okay? It's a lot. Our planet is primarily water. You know what else is primarily water? The human body. So our second fact is that in the human body, it is greater than 60% water. And now we just say greater than 60% because it depends on each person, it depends on your gender, your height, your weight, a lot of different factors, but on average it's greater than 60%. So what happens when you go outside and you start sweating, right, especially here in Texas? Well, if you only lose about 2% of your water, then you just end up being thirsty, okay? So this has probably happened to most of us before. If you've ever gone for a run or maybe played a soccer game or you've just gone outside for an hour when it's really hot, you get thirsty and this is because you've sweat out some of the water. Now if you lose closer to 5% this is when you're going to start feeling a little funky, feeling a little off, it just doesn't feel right. Most people complain of headaches and fatigue. And so I've actually reached this level of dehydration before. Um, it was right when I moved down here in Texas and I was working out a lot. I just started to sweat and I wasn't just replenishing my system. I wasn't drinking enough water. So this is something that maybe some of you have felt, especially if you live in a warmer state, but maybe not always. Other people, hopefully you've never experienced this, but if you lose anywhere between 10 and 15% of your water, then you end up having spastic muscles. And we're going to talk about this in future videos, but basically what happens is your concentration of your water in those actual, those solvents that are in there, or your minerals that are in there, excuse me, not solvents, solutes that are in there, and so the minerals that are inside your system are ended up sending pulses across your muscle, and they end up doing these weird contractions without your brain actually telling it to do that. So it's really bad. If you ever get to this part and you're having spastic muscles, you need to go to a hospital immediately and get an IV so that it can, they can pump you full of water. Now, if it's greater than 15%, it's really bad. Okay. We all know that if you don't drink water, you actually can die. Okay, You can die from dehydration. It's really, really bad. We'll talk about this in future videos as well, but I just want you to keep this in your back of your mind. This isn't just like a silly thing because I really like talking about water. It's a real deal. You need to absolutely be replenishing your system and drinking water on a daily basis. All right, the last thing I want you to know just from this video is that it takes about 100 gallons of water per day to support the lifestyle of one U.S. citizen. Okay? 
takes a hundred gallons of water every single day to support the lifestyle. Okay. I'm not talking about just drinking water. That's, that would be crazy. Okay. We're talking about the lifestyle. So we're going to talk about all these different things in the future here with these videos, but I just want you to keep these in the back of your mind, the main points that we're trying to cover here in this module. The last thing I want you to do is a quick little math problem. I want to know in a hundred gallons of water, how many liters is that? And I'm going to give you one quick conversion just to help you, but in theory, you should be able to Google this. So we know that one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. Okay. So convert gallons to liters. Go. All right. Did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. All you had to do was start with what you know, which is your hundred gallons. So if you have a hundred gallons, you know that for every one gallon, you have 3.785 liters. So all you have to do is multiply 100 times 3.785 and you just end up with 378.5 liters a day needed to support the lifestyle of one American citizen. That's not good folks, drink water.